Hey everybody, glad to have you back. Um, a couple videos ago, we did a Sarmiento brace video, how to apply a Sarmiento DME to a humeral fracture arm. <clears throat> uh, it was brought up today while we were actually in clinic that in the collection of videos, uh, prior to the Sarmiento brace, we did not do a coaptation splint video. So we're gonna do that today. Coaptation splint, for those of you who don't know, is uh, a splint that you would apply with orthoglass or you can use plaster. You bring it, uh, you start it uh, right at the AC junction, you come down over the fracture zone, in this case the humerus, come underneath the elbow, the left grenade, you come underneath and you come all the way up to about two fingers from the armpit or the axillary space. And what it does, it creates a, a hard outer and inner shell to protect the humeral fracture. Uh, it, it is similar to uh, the other videos we've made. If you go through the channel, <clears throat> there's a, a video on how to do a sugar tong splint and a reverse sugar tong splint. And there's also a video on how to do a stirrup splint on the lower leg. The stirrup splint by design, the sugar tong by design, and the coaptation by design are all the exact same splint. They just have different names because of where they're placed on the body. But if you were to measure them out, all three of them would be almost identical. So in this particular case, we're gonna assume he's got a fracture. We're gonna use standard cotton padding. We're gonna, in this case, instead of opting for plaster, because plaster's messy, we're gonna do orthoglass and uh, some regular ace wraps. We're gonna jump right into it. Pretty basic stuff. I'll get some cotton. I'm gonna start mid forearm on purpose because the coaptation splint will only come just under the elbow. So in reality, the coaptation splint won't go any farther than my middle finger. So I'm gonna start the padding just distal to that, just so we have extra padding there. The padding goes on just like it goes on with any other splint video you've seen on my channel or any other cast video. When you get one, excuse me, when I get to the crease, I like to, to shear it off so it doesn't dig into the crease. Some people prefer to cut it. But the one thing that everybody agrees on is that when you come to the, the bend, either here or in the armpit or the knee or wherever it's gonna be, when you come to a right angle, you never ever use the edge of the padding, the edge of the fiberglass, or the edge of the ace wrap. You always use the middle. So as I work my way up the arm, we'll time lapse it real quick, save you a couple minutes of time. So when you get to, we're gonna go ahead and bring it back to normal recording. When you get to this portion here of the padding, the one mistake that is made the most common is that it's over padded. That's the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is when you have, when you have a, a, a meaty type shoulder like this, go ahead and bring your arm down and let it hang. When you have a meaty shoulder, it's kind of hard to find that jump, but it's right there. Cause that's where you wanna anchor not only the padding, but you wanna also anchor the orthoglass there. So the best way to do this without, without making it slip or without becoming cumbersome, take a strip, create your marker. I like to use a folded strip under the armpit so it doesn't get all bunched up. So uh, I, want to, I want to show you what we did here. We went ahead and used a two inch around the AC junction and I want to show you that what, what I did in some portions here to really, really anchor it down, I took a two inch and I sheared it right down the middle. And I wanna make sure that I'm very transparent on this because I want you guys to make sure you really get the idea of what I did here. I did two inch strips, two inch strips. And if you look under the armpit here, you can actually see where the strips are. Like I literally did strips of two inch and then I anchored them all down with a strip of two inch that I turned into a one inch and I brought it all the way around and I used it as a holding anchor to keep them in place. So go ahead and bring your arm down. And so now you have not as much slippage, but if you still have slippage, I'll show you one more trick. Come back up. 
and if you have slippage where this wants to come down because you have a thicker shoulder, you can take a piece of material. Let me grab, let me, you can keep recording, let me grab one smaller piece. You can grab a piece of two inch, and I want to show you the really, really cool trick here. Watch this. You come right at the base of the armpit. You come around one time, just normal, not too tight. And then you do a half turn right there. Just do a half turn right across the middle. Come down, come back underneath, and then you do a second half turn right, just a little bit below it, just like so. And what that does, that does the same effect as double knotting a shoelace, uh, a shoelace knot. And then you come around and you, and you just shear it off. Now bring your arm down. Now no more slippage. This double shoelace type twist never ever has to be tight and it keeps this in place. So now we can apply our ortho glass, which I will do now. So we've measured out a strip of orthoglass. In this case, I'm going to use a three inch wide strip of orthoglass. I'm going to get rid of the excess on the edges. I'm going to cut it like so, get rid of the corners and get rid of the little shards that stick up. I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm going to warm up my water a little bit so that it can heat it up. Like so. I'm going to only wet one side of it. I'm going to wet the side that I plan on facing outward. So I'll do that with some warm water. Just a little bead of water is all you need. That is all. And you only need to wet one side. Get your hands, massage the water into the material, nice and even. And any excess you have, in, my, in this particular case, because I didn't use an excessive amount of water, a few paper towels will do the job. If you find yourself using an overabundance of water, you'll have to roll this up in a towel and squeeze all the extra water out of it. Remember that if the ace wraps on the outside are wet, that's okay as long as the cotton on the inside is not wet. So this is our coaptation splint. This is the portion, the dry side is gonna be up against the cotton. This, the wet side, will be out, outward facing towards the ace wraps. I am going to fold over the edges on purpose. One, because we're working with the axillary space. So I wanna make sure there's no chance whatsoever of this poking his armpit. He's already dealing with a fractured arm, humerus. I don't wanna to add to his troubles. Come down, relax. You bring it directly up like so. And you bring it right over that spot where we did all that padding. I'm gonna fold just a hair more, just like so. And if you have, if you're by yourself working, you need an extra set of hands, have the patient help you. Come across and just hold right there for me, just softly, it's fine. And as you start to see the presentation here, as you look, it's starting to look like a sugar tong. So now, and don't worry about this cotton come up, that's okay, it's no problem. The cotton is mostly there to help soften the rigidity of the actual coaptation splint, which is already heating, it's already hardening. Again, nursing 101, you always start distal and you work your way up. Remember, the ace wraps are only there to hold the splint in place. They're not there to be, to be tight at all. Now, when you start to get under the armpit, this goes for the cotton, this goes for the ortho glass, this goes for the ace wraps. Now, real life scenario, we all know this is not a real patient. If this were a real patient, every time I come in this space here, they would be freaking out because their arm's broken. If that's the case, stand up for me, stand up straight, back about one step back, there's a trick you can use so that you can get under this space without hurting the patient. Hold their arm in place, help them out, and have them lean forward at the waist. Dead weight, let your arm hang, dead weight. There you go. 
and then I want you to lean, keep leaning down at the waist, keep leaning down. As they lean down at the waist, their arm breaks away from their torso. You can get in here without moving them around too, too much. And that same trick I showed you with the cotton with the twist, you can do that with the ace wrap too. If you feel the need to, you can do that with the ace wrap. But again, that's your choice depending on, on you and your patient. And then I'm gonna use a smaller ace wrap to go around the top here. Now, when you do the top, you can go ahead and stand back up if you want. I just wanted to show them that trick about bending over. You take this ace wrap, just like I did with the cotton, fold it in half, you can let go. Create your anchor, come back under the armpit, secure it from the top down. Give it a little bit of tension, just a little bit. Just like so, and that is pretty much your coaptation splint. You can secure this with a strip of tape if, you, if it's a pediatric and you think they might mess with it, arm dead weight hanging down. Now, go ahead and hold this hand with your other hand for me. As you're looking at it, it should be in a right angle. It, it, just the few minutes it took me to wrap the ace wraps, it's already getting hard. You want it to be nice and hard, protect that humeral fracture. The doctor will more than likely order a sling. If they do order a sling, make sure, if I may, go ahead and let go, make sure that when, when you put the sling on them, their arm is a nice relaxed position, usually across the belly. The more in a typical humerus fracture, the more you bring the hand up, the more you increase the risk of separating that fracture. And the same thing's true if the arm's hanging too low. If the arm's hanging too low, two things are gonna happen. You're gonna change the shape of your coaptation splint and you may shift the fracture in a more uncomfortable position. So you put them in a sling and you ask them, as you place the sling on and around, you, add, you start to cinch it up and Velcro it. Is this comfortable? No, no, no. And you bring their hand down. You let me know where it's the most comfortable. They'll tell you and wherever they tell you, that's where you secure it. So that is our coaptation splint to go along with the Sarmiento brace uh, video that we made about two or three videos ago. Um, just to keep an eye out, the next few videos we're gonna be doing, I've had some requests for uh, decorative uh, children's cast, how to decorate children's cast. So we'll do a couple of videos on decorative children's casting. And uh, there was another, oh, I had somebody ask me the other day to do a video on what to do with a wet cast, actually showing on video an actual wet cast and, and how we approach that like in the emergency room setting. So keep an eye out for those videos coming up soon. You guys have a good day.